having like the 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 pendulum swinging from 51 49 51 49 where people are so diametrically opposed on everything isn't going to be enough to get anything passed and maybe it shouldn't be maybe those polarization problems that exist in society maybe that's what needs to be addressed rather than trying to find some system that makes it so that like 50.001 percent of the people can immediately enact all sorts of widespread changes that are just going to be rolled back and, and, and 180 on the next election cycle are you for the divorce, Destiny? Are you for the peaceful divorce? There is no such thing as a peaceful divorce. I can, I yeah, can, I can, just, just, okay, I'm sorry, okay, just, okay, I'll declare, this isn't, this isn't even philosophically wrong. This is just absolutely wrong. You support the system by living and existing here. That's how the That's system is supported. True. Absolutely, absolutely true. true. If, if, you if, pay if, taxes. If, if every single libertarian, if every single libertarian country stopped voting. Topic one. Um, should either politicians or parties put their support behind politically toxic causes? For instance, should a politician fight for gun law reform in a pro-gun state? Or should a Democratic president have come out for gay marriage before there was popular support? Are parties strictly for the purpose of putting political wins on the board, which means they should only support a short bet? Or is there importance for parties to move the needle on unpopular issues? Yeah, uh, so this is a thing, it's something we've argued about plenty of times, right? Um, whether, like, there, and there's a whole list of these things, list of these issues that I'm sure you can always come up with that people have fought for, especially on the activist level, right? Um, and we argue, why aren't politicians doing this? Or when they do do this, we're like, why are they doing this? Because maybe this is popular, right? Um, so I wanted to, uh, you know, like, what is really the purpose of these things, right? Um, and, uh, should, uh, we expect politicians to take, for instance, like a brave stance? If this is, like, if... Uh, your principles lead you to believe this. You should be taking a brave stance, even if the public is not there yet. All right. Opening statements. Keep them short. All right. Uh, we'll start. Peace go. Yeah, um, I think that it's very important for our constitutional system that um, certain politicians not be completely 100 percent responsive to input from the polity. That's one of the reasons why, for instance, the uh, the Senate um, has longer periods for election is precisely because our framers, and I think any good institutional designer um, recognize that sometimes elected officials and representatives cannot just merely follow the whims of, of a polity that, that can, you know, where, where favor can turn like the wind. And so I think that while I obviously think that elected officials should be somewhat responsive to, uh, to democratic impulse, I don't think it should be perfectly mapped on. And what's more is I do think that elected officials have a duty um, and an ethical duty to try to move uh, the country and their um, wherever their constituency is in a direction that, that is ethical. Um, and they have a capability of doing so too. Just because our democracy is responsive and just because um, elected officials tend to, by and large, um, sort of go along with the, the desires of their, or their people, though not perfectly so, um, I think uh, the other, the inverse is true, and that politicians can have effect on their electorates. Just look at Donald Trump, um, who has had a massive effect, I think, in terms of political opinion in the Republican Party, um, and had, has had he himself has moved um, sort of their political desires as well. So it's a two-way street, um, and yes, elected officials should be responsive, but not perfectly so. Thank you so much, fanatic. Yeah, I think Bernie Sanders is an amazing person for kind of pushing the Overton window. I don't like some of the leftists and some of the idiots that have come forward, but ultimately I do think that he kind of pushed a bunch of ideologies that I think were really good and were against the status quo. And so I think those sorts of things are beneficial, um, even if those things are not necessarily what's like whatever. Um, but I do think that there is strategy that needs to be implemented, right? And there are plenty of times where a politician might vo vo vocalize something that can harm the party. We saw that like um, when it came to the 2016 election with certain po po um, po politicians kind of losing seats or at least seeming like there was some uh, backlash because of maybe their endorsement of some leftist policies uh, like defund the police and things like that. So ultimately, I think it's a great thing, but uh, it does need to be done responsibly. You think you kind of points. Yeah, uh, what Pisco said, it's both. I don't like saying it's one or the other. And on top of that, some of the most memorable and powerful things that have been done in American history have been done by people who are outside of the Overton window. If you think about Abraham Lincoln, if you think about, uh, you know, kind of as they brought up, like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders hasn't changed anything policy wise, but at the same time, he shifted the Overton window in the American conversation. Um, I don't think that it is enough for elected representatives just to be the the passive, like, you know, 
uh, zeitgeist of poll research within their districts, I think that they should help form the culture. And this actually kind of goes exactly to the Trump example, where in the Trump example, we had a bunch of Republicans who are going along with the zeitgeist, whereas if they maybe took a stand or actually had some kind of principal position that didn't necessarily make sense from an electoral standpoint, maybe they could have helped mitigate some of the damage that we've seen over the past few years. Uh, so I'll leave it there and I'm looking forward to the open. Okay, thank you, Just, uh, Destiny. Yeah, same answers. Um, I don't know if we're going to find a lot of disagreement here, but I mean, politicians in some ways are responsible for representing the will of their electorate. But depending on the seat that you hold or the position that you're in, you might be able to push politically a little bit more than somebody else can. Uh, I wish people would recognize this reality a little bit more. I don't expect Manchin to push a progressive agenda very much in the United States because he doesn't have the opportunity to. But AOC can definitely push much farther left than another politician could. And I think that that type of pushing, um, even if it might not be safe for somebody in a vulnerable district to do, can still be valuable overall because it kind of shapes and moves the entire national discourse and then eventually can get us closer to those policies. So, yeah, I think it's cool when, um, when, when people are both kind of like politicians and political activists at the same time. It just depends on where their district is and, and the type of seat they hold. Uh, Lucas. I mean, so this idea that there have been um, political um, participants that have been staying true to their principles, it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion. I mean, Trump was ran as a pro-war president and you know he still bumped the shit out of Yemen. Uh, Abraham Lincoln wasn't running in, uh, against slavery. That wasn't one of the things that he wanted wanted to abolish uh but yeah i mean i think uh political um people should um definitely stay true to the principles uh i'm a libertarian uh one of the reasons that i'm a libertarian is because the libertarian party even before it was popular around this country uh they were defending you know they were against police brutality they were um against um broken windows police wait no sorry um what's it called jesus christ i forgot sorry uh, but yeah, basically, uh, yeah, I think politicians should definitely stay true to their principles. And uh, the reason they haven't, they don't do it is because they don't really care about it. They don't really have principles and they just say whatever they want. To, they have to say to get in, in office. Uh, Gappy. I don't think it's as doomer as people put it that way. I think politicians do actually have principles, and I think Destiny makes a good point in the sense that they have to represent their constituency. At the end of the day, politicians want to win. They want to get reelected, and the policies that win in places like the Bronx and New York 14th isn't going to be the same types of policies that win in like uh, the West Virginia Senate. Um, when we look at the current situation where the balance of power is like on such a razor thin edge, I think at that point it does become very critical and crucial as a party to emphasize that element of unity and trying to win seats over just uh, trying to like push for your policies. But that's kind of like an edge case. Most of the time it's usually not like that. And I think as a politician, you do have an obligation to try and push for what's best for your community. I mean, that's why earmarking is a thing. That's why um, blog rolling is a thing. Politicians do it all the time, and to suggest that politicians don't do that, or that, oh, they're only in it because they're just lying and they'll say whatever they want to get elected, that's just not true, unless we're implying that every single voter is just a dumbass. Yeah, uh, Debbie. Um, I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit on the fence on this topic. I think on one hand, I, I agree that, you know, it's important for leaders to step up and to support good causes, even if there's, like, a good chance that they'll get backlash, because their voices on the national stage can be powerful catalysts for change. Um, but on the other hand, I don't think I don't know if it would be like beneficial for someone like uh, Obama um, to undermine his campaign um, by supporting like a politically volatile topic like gay marriage you know, at the time he was running for election. That might have ended up with us having McCain in office, which would have probably been a really uh, awful shit show, um, even in, in with the U.S.'s uh, uh, pre-Trump. Right? We, we would have. We, Probably would have been bombing fucking McCain. Um, I'm sorry, Iran at the time. If we'd ended up with something like that, so I'm like, right now it can be moved either way. Um, but I'm leaning toward what seems to be the more pragmatic option, even if it's last principle. Okay, uh, Scott. So I think there are a couple interesting elements to this conversation. One of the, one of the questions that's kind of begged within the question itself is like, are we a democracy or are we a constitutional republic? Right. And part of the, the point of being a constitutional republic is that politicians aren't necessarily beholden 
to like a kind of 51% or 60% majority of what their district supports or doesn't support, right? Um, the, you know, before the 17th of the amendment, right? Like the framers of the constitution, so I'm just fixing my camera a little bit. Um, you know, they, they understood this, and this is why the House of Representatives was supposed to be directly elected by the population. And part of the reason why the Senate was supposed to be elected by the states, right? It would, it would make sure that the federal government didn't grow, that they respected states' rights, but also so that like things that might be ridiculous but are popular um, by the majority of people could be shut down or things that might not necessarily be popular by the majority of people but are good from like a, a policy perspective would, would get boosted forward, right? Um, of, of course, as an anarchist, I, I think it's all trash, right? Um, but, you know, like you, you kind of have to work towards the direction um, that you want to go. Um, I, I also think, too, that we're maybe having this conversation a little disingenuously about the American public voting for politicians. Sure, there are cults of personality like AOC or Trump or Bernie Sanders, right, that, that garner votes because of who they are. But a lot of people vote down party ticket, right? They don't even know who their senator is or who their House of Representatives member is or especially their state people. And so the, the idea that you can stray too far away from the party politics and like not cause like some issues, right? Is, is gonna be some concern because a lot of people are voting for a party and not necessarily voting for an individual. And obviously we can have some you know more detailed discussions about that as the panel opens up. Open panel. God. Uh, just pushing back on one small thing. Uh, this is a bit of a deviation, but tiny, tiny, tiny thing. Uh, I just don't believe that a um, Abraham Lincoln like really pushed the Overton window. There was all sorts of conversations specifically about the abolition of slavery. There was like entire abolition movement, which was largely Christian. But anyway, that had already been existing. I don't think like Abraham Lincoln was specifically responsible for that. I don't think the argument would be necessarily that he like single-handedly moved it, but just that with a president, it maybe could have gone either way. Not to say that there wasn't like some inevitable inevitability that we were moving in a certain direction in regards to slavery and everything in the United States, but maybe him being there at that time moved it. Um, somebody brought up the point, um, kind of comparable to that, to um, Obama, that like if Obama was like pushing things that were just like big political points and maybe necessarily weren't the most popular, that we would have had McCain. I mean, we can argue that presidents do do this when they throw their weight behind an agenda that might be divisive in the future. I think this is one of the reasons why presidents lose their uh, houses so oftentimes in the uh, second part of their term. You can ar arguably... Uh, the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, was why um, Obama lost uh, his House majority after the passage of that, right? Because so much political capital was expended on that. Or I think I've heard things saying that, like, the assault weapons ban provision in the 93 crime bill or whatever, um, uh, you know, affected Clinton's majorities in the House and Senate as well. So, I mean, I think there are times where people, like, lean into something that they don't have to, but they choose to because either it's a political calculation or it is a value, and it still ends up costing them a bit in the future as well. Obama also made some hard choices. Um, if you read his book, he talks about how, you know, the decision to support the Afghanistan war, which he sort of recognized as the, quote, good war, um, it wasn't easy as, as a matter of, of being synchronized with the Democrats. And so I, I reject the notion that, that o Obama was a, a pure populist, totally responsive to only popular opinions at the time. He made some hard choices. And indeed, Obamacare itself, I think, was uh, a, an act of a political calculus, which ultimately hurt him in, in the elections. But um, looking at the options in front of us, I think in hindsight was the right choice. Yeah, and and that's kind of that's kind of my point is like, you know, if you only do what's politically expedient, you're going to be a, a toothless politician, and you might as well have not existed in the in the first place. Besides being representative of some polling data, and when we think about like, I, I don't necessarily like great men politics, um, but you can't deny the the impacts of certain people. So while like I'll admit that like. Uh, what, what is it like Abraham Lincoln might not have single-handedly started like the abolition movement or whatever um, I still think there's something to be said for the fact that like it takes a little bit of balls to order an army into 50% of your country to you know basically like slash and burn it um, in, in the name of uh, politics so like that you know that that's where I think we've kind of become accustomed to wars being like really far away and kind of the the consequences of political actions to be further away from us um, but the truth is that these things do have uh, a lot going on with them, and it's kind of easy to wash your hands of it and say, like, fuck it. Like, you know, um, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but I, I think that's like a point of privilege for us that we're able to say that shit in this day and age. Sure, I, I wasn't dismissing, like, him having, like, any importance or any relevance and all of that stuff. Like, I'm just saying I don't think he pushed the Overton window, per se. But sure, he had obviously all of the significance, like, um, you know, the emancipation... Um, 
you know, proclamation that he signed was actually super duper important. His willingness to like actually stay in the Civil War, all these things were like really, really great things. Um, uh, you know, his motivation was probably to preserve the Union, but ultimately it doesn't matter. Like he had an insane impact. So that I wasn't, un I wasn't pushing back against any of those things. I'm curious, uh, Fabian, um, and, and I guess Lucas as well, you guys must be extremely fearful of the tyranny of the majority. Would you in America be in favor of moving away from direct election of senators? You mentioned that, Fabian. Yes. Yeah, so I would I would be I would personally be in favor of repealing the Seventeenth Amendment. Yeah, this is the one where your state legislative bodies used to appoint the senators, right? Instead of it being yes, I yes. dude, is there an argument against that? This is kind of off topic. That seems so based because it seems like it makes you way more invested in your state level elections as well. Yeah, no, I mean I think that was I think, the goal of it. Yeah. I mean the 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 repeal the 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 repeal. I'm sorry, the the instantiation of the Seventeenth Amendment eventually led to the 1990s kind of. Um, oh my God! Who was the big Republican that was up against Bill Clinton? That was the majority leader. Um, oh my gosh! Newt Gingrich. Yes, Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich understood because of that that what we could do is we could make local elections national, right? That was how he took in 1994 or 92. Sorry, the the off year election after 94. So the off year election after Clinton, right? He realized that what we needed to do was start pushing national politics at a local stage. And th because we have become so divested from local politics, most people don't even vote in local elections because they feel like it has no relevance to them, despite the fact that local elections are way more important to their lives, right? It's almost yeah. like, like psychologically, it's almost the exact opposite because most people aren't that invested in, in politics. And I think the reason I bring that up is because I believe that the founding fathers understood that they were trying to craft a government that kind of had like every element of like Plato's, uh, you know, ideal government types, right? Like you have the philosopher king in the executive um, presidency, right? Like you have the democracy within the the um, the house. You have kind of like the oligarchy in in in, in, a, in, a, in a sense in the senate, senate, right? And so it's supposed to be not just a balance of like you know checks and balances between different. Um, different um, houses of government or between the federal and the state level, but also between different types of government, right? That was that was part of the, the idea of having an unelected Senate, but mostly it was there to preserve states' rights, right? To keep the federal government from getting too Can long. I challenge that for a moment? I mean, are you really putting the, the fact that we have been more worried, and I and agree with you that like, I, I would say that people more identify in terms of their national citizenship than their state citizenship. Are you putting that on the heels of repealing the, um, the fact that uh, we have direct elections of, of senators, I mean, or that we I mean, enacted we could, that we amendment. Could, we, could, we could have like a whole fucking like three hour discussion on the 17th amendment. And I'm sure that would be fascinating, right? Um, I know I'm not putting it solely on the heel of one thing. I'm saying it's one one factor, right? I think that was coming no matter what. The Civil War, I think. I mean, yeah, no, before the, I mean, before the Civil yeah. War, for example, people used to say that they were from Virginia. Now they said from the United States. As a matter of fact, the vocabulary of the United States changed. People used to say the United States of America are a good place to live. And then after the Civil War, they would said the United States of America is a good place to live, right? So, I mean, obviously the Civil War probably had more of an impact. I'm simply mentioning one yeah, thing Yeah, but I think you're, and I'm you're not even talking about. Yeah. I'm not even talking about people identifying that was something destiny brought up not what i brought up i'm sure. talking about i'm talking about the fact that people are invested whether or not they're invested in local elections and their relevancy and whether or not they're more invested in federal elections but you are in favor of repealing that amendment aren't you yeah okay yeah. i think that what that would produce is just an enormous shift of uh, a balance of power even more than it is already to rural voters who are who are already being able to uh, take advantage of i think totally unjustifiable gerrymanders and the kind of finagling in the states just on the nth degree. Um, and I think we already have way too much uh, sort of disproportionate power in the hands of, of rural voters in this country. I mean, I mean, you could you could say that and that'd be interesting and I'd love to debate you on that. But again, that strays away from the topic of the question at hand, which is the idea of whether or not politicians should be supporting things that are necessarily toxic to their candidacy or di differing from their party. Right. And the reason I bring this up is an idea that this is one of the things that inspired the founding fathers and the framers of the Constitution um, to create the Senate separate from direct direct elections. Yeah, but I, I would say nowadays, uh, a lot of the country, I would say including the presidency, are not responsive enough to democracy. Some of these, I think, archaic um, systems in place that the framers constructed, such as the Electoral College. Um, 
Wait, are like, you in favor of the elect democracy? I mean, in, in terms of the presidency, I'm, I'm very much against the electoral college. I think it's absolutely unjustifiable. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just fucking that's just fucking cope because you don't like the way the country is, is done. <laughs> no, 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 one, I, no one, no one with it that's actually seriously thought about it wants presidents only in eastern seaboard major cities. Yeah, okay, uh, you know, campaigning. That's not what the electoral like college. Not a fuck about rural areas. That's not, right? like, I mean, that's not what you. The electoral college doesn't seem to do. What, what do you think the electoral college does? I mean, it's 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 to instantiate that rural individuals and people from smaller states have more power in our election processes. It's smaller so that states. We don't, it's smaller yeah. states. Yeah. And so, rural voters in Which California, rural, rural voters. voters, but rural, but it's not based on that. It's based on the, the you know the, the fact that you're a small state. You proportionally Pisco, get more votes. Pisco's vote. already apparently um, trying to practice being a prosecutor, man, because he's ready. <laughs> he's ready to fight ghosts and get away from the topic. Like, well, I think, well, I, I think it's a little bit unfair to say that the electoral college is like a necessary institution that needs to exist to protect, protect like rural interests when we already have like the Senate, right? You can argue that there's a lot of overlap there in terms of what they accomplish, because the Senate also automatically disproportionately favors smaller states, but the Senate explicitly disproportionately favors smaller states, which you can argue is good or bad. The electoral college doesn't necessarily do that because um, doesn't necessarily um, favor like rural voters as you would claim you'd want it to because rural vote like uh, Pisco said rural voters in California aren't getting any more representation or rural voters in any you know solidly blue state aren't getting any more representation I, I think there's legitimate arguments in, on both sides of that and the topic well, is really the, the essence of the topic is about the responsiveness of our elected officials to the polity and what this does is shift essentially who the polity is um, and and how much say each member of whatever polity uh, you're, you're talking about gets. And so I think the Electoral College is, is relevant to the essence of the question. Yeah, and, and FLS, like, I don't think we should rigidly stick to the, the, the topic if we all fucking agree. If we can go on to a fucking tangent where we start yelling at each other, I think that's I mean, fine. I, I mean, I have, I, have some, I have some disagreements with the topic, right? I think, I think uh, you know, I introduced this idea that, like, most Americans are voting down party ticket, right? They're voting because someone has a D or an R next to their name. Right, not this most is, people don't live in AOC's district. Right? This, this is like a creationist fallacy or whatever kind of. We're like uh, people exist on the planet Earth, uh, you know, because God made them to be. Rather than, well, maybe people developed to exist on Earth because that's how the Earth is, right? When you say that, like everybody happens to vote for the same party. Sure, that's true, but that's because people in the same party also tend to share the same beliefs as well, right? So we can't just say that people only down ballot vote because they're only looking for the DDR. And even if they are, it's not a creationist fallacy. Well, well, even, even, even if you're not I mean, look, at Virginia, you know. look yeah. at Virginia right now. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, even just, if it, even yeah. if that's true that they do down ballot vote, which they do a lot, they could be because there's right, shared beliefs there, do, which is the majority of voters. Sure, right. but they, but that also there are breaks from that as well, and we saw that in the last election cycle where there were districts that Trump like massively carried where that down ballot effect didn't happen, or there were districts where Biden won where that down ballot effect uh, did not happen as much too so i think right, people will break there about, you're talking about a small group of independent voters right that and then but what i'm saying is a majority of americans right and, and the and majority of americans did this a majority of americans support a political party and they tend to support that political party almost no matter who sure but let, let's just think about what you're saying a majority of americans that would vote for a democratic president would also vote for like a democratic uh governor or a democratic house of representative or a democrat congressman or a democratic senator right that's to be expected right like that we would expect right. to see that even if everybody was analyzing every single individual politician. Right, but we know from exit polls, right? Like, it's a commonly known thing. Like, don't, like, let's not pretend that this is what a, is common a commonly thing. known thing. They're, they're willing to go to a presidential from. election, they vote for president, and they have no fucking idea who the rest of the people yeah. are that they're voting. And that's a large portion of the American public, right? They're just voting because they believe in a party's platform, at least to a certain extent, right? And so when you deviate heavily from that party platform, right, in a certain way, you do have to understand that you're going to catch shit, right? Because you may actually be deviating from what the electorate voted you for. Talk to Hamilton. Don't go to someone's website and look at their fucking position. This has been the case issues. for so then, the, centuries. So then these voters aren't just like voting down ballot blindly. Clearly, if someone they, strays from the platform too far, they're going to be moving from it. We saw it with well, Nina Turner. We saw it with that India Walton person in Buffalo who completely lost to a fucking writing candidate from a guy who retired because they absolutely Absolutely hated her platform, yeah. even though she was Democrat. Outliers. I don't think voters is not is not an argument against. Yeah. But the I'm fact saying. that there is such strong sways between someone being Democrat versus a literal right in candidate, I think, goes to show that voters are not as absolutely fucking stupid people. If anything, but, as these elections get more and more well, local, yeah, where there is less. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Nobody said that they were, were stupid. You are always fighting ghosts. What? Why are you saying that? Wait. He said that voters are stupid. He never said that. 
I mean, okay, we're implying they... that voters just tick down and go fucking down ballot all the time. They're not fucking capable of actually that thinking. That doesn't mean they're say they weren't capable, Gappy. I'm talking about the reality. I mean, so this is why shit. socialists well, well, never well, fucking get anything done because you know, they don't live in the real world. You, you cited the framers. The real world. You cited right? the framers. Like, Madison, who uh, you know, I think a very important framer so far as the Constitution is concerned, right. he thought that political parties were inevitable. That, of mm -hmm. course, if you have shared interests, shared interests are, are stronger together. What's the ape strong together? That's the, the yeah. line. And yeah. uh, so, so he, at least for him, he tried to limit faction. If you read the Federalist Papers, he, he mm -hmm. tried to do what he could to, to limit the, the effect of faction, the effect of political parties. But, but they were in some sense inevitable. And right after Washington's presidency, already it was breaking down and, and the, the party's system was emerging. Um, so, and it I mean, continues I, to I this do day. think it's important to people that aren't you know, maybe that aren't American or anything. When talking about the Federalist Papers, a lot of them are propaganda. Um, not not to say like they're that's necessarily a negative thing, but the Federalists are arguing for you know a, a version of the Constitution. The anti federalists are arguing for another, right? So it's not necessarily the same as like letters to other individuals about their thoughts or their diaries or things like that, right? Like they're kind of putting their best foot forward in terms of supporting um, their political stance in, in the Federalist Papers. I mean, this is going to be basically that's a description of almost all political writings to some extent, right? Like even we yeah, can no, say I personal wanted, letters I just or to be people fair are... and frame it. Sure. Did you think you thought that the, the Federalist Papers were infallible and that it actually is a, a truth of the universe that like a treatise uh, on the thoughts of uh, Madison or whatever on or yeah, you uh, cited the framers and, and their ingenuity in perfecting and crafting the system. And I'm merely I suggesting to you, I'm an anarchist. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Well, at least you, you pointed <laughs> their ingenuity as, as a reason, as a rationale for why it made sense to have this this split between the Senate and the House of Representatives. I, all I'm saying is it seems like a lot of countries have a tendency toward political parties. Um, and, and I don't know that that's inherently a horrible thing uh, mm -hmm. so long as you, you try to sort of limit the the horrible externalities that I would agree with you, I think, are, are present, which include kind right, of I'm like... Just, I'm just trying to get to the nuanced position that, like, you know, a political party, like, when people say, oh, it's obviously it's okay for people to stray away from a political party, right, and follow their principles. I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for it, right? Like, you know, my my, eth my ethics are virtue ethics and deontological. Like, I'm not a consequentialist, right? Like, I don't give a fuck about going to the, to the, to the party platform. At the same time, I do think it's important to understand that a lot of American voters, right, they feel intrinsically tied to a political party in terms of what they want their politics doing and not necessarily to individuals, right? And so when certain people break away, you get this idea and you see it from people on social media or, you know, when it's the left, you know, and, and, and they do it in, in news or outlets or organizations, right? This idea of like calling a politician a traitor, right? And it's like, right. because, because a Republican decided to vote for a bump stock bill or because a Democrat decided that like they didn't want to vote for a health care bill because they're like, dude, I'm in fucking West Virginia. Like that's not going to fucking fly. Or they're just principled and like they're a blue dog Democrat or a 90s Democrat and they're a little different. right? You see this idea of like, oh, they're a traitor to the party because a lot of people do feel yeah, I mean, like Destiny himself showed up in fucking Georgia. He's not from Georgia. What fucking right does he have to do to campaign in Georgia? Do you think well, that that was an immoral action for him to Georgia? go there? Because he thought it was an important election that was going to affect him despite the fact that he didn't live in Georgia, right? So a lot of people have ideas. And it, was it because he deeply believed in the, politi the the candidates, right? Was it because Destiny just knew these people personally? No, he went there because he's he thought the Democrats were better than the Republicans, right? And he Well, hold on. To be clear, I went there because it, it, the office that he's representing is a federal level it's office, a national right? Office. Yeah. right? Exactly. So it affects you, right? And, right, and it, it affects you in some way, despite you not even being a part Part of that electorate. Well, but I am so a part of. Well, I, but th that's. I think that's kind of a weird thing in terms of am I part of that electorate or not? Because we're talking about like national level offices, right? Like yeah, I might no, not be a member of that state, you. but like the national. I'm level not trying offices, to yeah. talk shit on you, Dustin. Sure. No, no, I, I know you're not. I'm just saying that like I think that there is. I think the interest is there is a bit different than like electing somebody on like a state level election or like a city level election. I think it's a bit different, but. Right, so yeah, but we're so, talking about the renegade from the party or whether or not people support the party. Yeah, but I think that, so the renegade stuff happens more. I think the reason why people feel that renegade stuff happens more is because on a on a national level, we run into some of the problems where if you are a Democrat or a Republican, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're aligning 100% with Democrats or Republicans from across the country because these Democrats and Republicans are delivered from very different electorates, sometimes even within their own states. Uh, a good example is uh, Mark Kelly and Cinema from, they're from Nevada. Nevada, right? Or Arizona? Nevada? Arizona. I think Arizona, right? Um, where, where you, you have these- LA for Arizona. Yes. Okay. We, yeah. we, you have these, um, you have two senators who are both 
Democrats and both from that state, um, but they are their electorates are, are the people that vote for them. Their supporters are very different, right? Where Mark yeah. Kelly is like a solid left leaning person, and Cinema is absolutely not. But the composition of their voters and the favorability and unfavorability from like Republicans, Independents, and Democrats are way different between the two, and that's even within the same state. Sorry. Right, but what I'm saying is that there's a. There, oh, sorry, I'll let Counter go. Don't don't chimp out on us, Counter. All right? <laughs> hey, listen, not, not listen. yet. <laughs> Peace go asked me why I was an angry. Too early. Guy. I was too like, early. Get going, Counter. <laughs> why are you an infuriating person? You know, I think this it cuts both ways. Uh, but like, no. So okay, so this is kind of where I think we're landing on this though is the fact that like it seems like everybody wants to encourage the renegades because we feel like the system is like entrenched in like all of this bullshit but it also feels like it the is. second that you stick it the, the second that you stick your head out or whatever you get it chopped off and all i've heard for like the past like 10 or 15 minutes is all the reasons why people don't venture too out outside the box because there's there's like shit going on but then that's kind of the question about like um democracy or republican democracy or any of that kind of stuff is is it responsive enough to crisis so if, if you look at the global war on terror if you look at uh you know the drug war or if you look at global warming um is like representative uh mixed economy capitalism mixed with like representative democracy are, are is this system up to the challenges of uh of crises that we're seeing are we actually going to be able to rise above or are we kind of fucked because basically every single time that a, a, a politician you know reaches out in order to break the mold they just get their dick slapped like that that's kind of my question is is the system even responsive enough to all these problems i mean well, I think you know the there's you got two anarchists on the yeah. panel like obviously <laughs> no I mean, the reason the reason why they're getting their dick slapped right now is because it's so tight right now in terms of control between Democrats and Republicans, right? When we're talking about things is. like the when we're talking about the things like the repeal on Obamacare, the reason why it was so difficult and why you know that turn vote no from John McCain was so serious was because of the fact that the Republicans didn't have some huge, insanely high majority where they were instantly going to pass that AHCA. It's it's a double edged sword because on one hand, when you renegade in the situation like McCain did, it's so much easier for you to have so much power in the same way that um, Manchin did. But it also does fuck over your party, right? If we want more people to renegade and just be like, fuck it, I want to fight for whatever policies I want, the real solution is to just get a really fucking strong majority, and then from there we can do whatever the fuck we want in Congress. But we don't agree solution. on shit. Like that, I have that's another like, solution. Yeah. Maybe you guys are just supporting the wrong fucking party. You, I mean, like we can uh, say that, but like this is this is on the right side. Yeah, I but, guess the, but nobody. Here, here, yeah, here, I think the big problem is, and this is something I'll simp for over and over again. I think the big problem is that our political system is actually incredibly effective. Everything is working exactly as it should. The problem is that there exists. The reason why government seems so ineffective is because there is a very real polarization that exists right now in the American people that seems to be growing wider and wider apart. And if you have a government that is supposed to only be able to move, not with fifty-one percent of Americans supporting it, but in some cases it might be sixty people in the Senate supporting it. Might be a majority in the House and Senate. It might be a president that uh, won't veto something, right? If you're actually going to have a government set up like this, then having like the 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 pendulum swinging from 51 49 51 49 where people are so diametrically opposed on fucking everything isn't going to be enough to get anything passed. And maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe those polarization problems that exist in society, maybe that's what needs to be addressed rather than trying to find some system that makes it so that like 50.001% of the people can immediately enact all sorts of widespread changes that are just going to be rolled back and and, and 180 on the next election cycle. Are you for the divorce, Destiny? Are you for the peaceful divorce? There is no such thing as a peaceful divorce. It's not even a, yeah. Oh. Come on, come on. What, what is this peaceful the divorce? The idea that, like, one of the things that makes America, like, work so fucking well is the fact that we have 50 independent states that are, have such an insane level of integration uh, economically and, and, and geopolitically. The idea of, like, starting to split that up and to destroy, like, one of the most important aspects of what makes this country so powerful is so mind-numbingly stupid to me. And, and it doesn't even make sense. Like, who's going to leave? Like, the red states that can't financially, financially support themselves? Or, like, it, like it, that's just, it's a it's a beyond a stupid idea. I, I, don't, I don't know anybody that is actually floating this idea seriously, unless it's one of you guys, because you're ANCAP. But I'll there's still ton, say the same. There's tons it's, of people floating that idea. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's absolutely ludicrous. There's like a million different reasons why it wouldn't work. But hey, do you do you think that it's fair to say that maybe things aren't working so smoothly when there are like large amounts of position? I don't know about large amounts, but there are things that like super duper majority of Americans agree on, but we still can't get past. We don't. I don't. I don't think that's true. People say that a lot. That there's things that lots of Americans agree on that we can't pass. But I think what happens is, is broadly speaking, we agree on things. But when you start to get more and more granular, that's where all the disagreements uh, uh, start to come out. I think a really, really good example of this uh, could be healthcare. But we could go to the east and we could say a really good example of this is Brexit, where you barely had over half the country supporting Brexit. 
but nobody knew what the fuck that looked like. And in the following years, and even still arguably to today, people are trying to figure out well, what exactly does Brexit look like? So you might be able to say, well, you know, broadly speaking, most people support this. Okay, but they support what exactly? Because like there's a lot of different granular approaches to policy. And when you start running into all these disagreements there, you find out that you don't have nearly as much support as you thought you did initially. So I reject that framing that Americans broadly support on some things that can't get passed. I, I just don't think that happens. What do you have to say, Destiny, about the outsized influence that small states have in this union in our national ele- national policy, just based on the fact that Senate uh, votes are allocated uh, proportionally to states? And I not love people? it so fucking much. I How love the fact that every single state in this in this country has a buy-in, and that every other state has a buy-in to at least keep in mind the other states when it comes to our electoral process. That, I, I think yeah. Mexico, I'm sorry, it's, but it's very simple. But, it was it was it was to try and stop the tyranny of the majority. No, but but right? it, I mean, democracy is tyrannical, and we know that. Right. The framers. I don't I don't I don't agree that we should be responsive to, to we should be responsive in our policy that, that like one person can have an outsized majority uh, can have an influence I mean, of the, a tyranny of the minority. I mean, as opposed like, to tyranny I feel, of the majority. I feel, I feel like this system they, works so well, even the European Union with their with the way that the European Commission and the members of parliament work of European Parliament are, are structured in the exact same way, where even if you have your MEPs, trash and you know it. What, OK, even if you have your MEPs, your members of European Parliament that are elected like the House or different countries get um, different numbers of people that I believe that European Commission has one person from every single state. Right. Or you'll see even in, a, in the United Nations for the Security Council, like one person can have a veto power. I think the idea that you're getting These are different nations, Dustin, and you said yourself that America is, in that sense is unique and that we're, we're integrated well, well, in a level that I think Europe is there not. There are different nations, but okay, so ho- hopefully there's no alt writers watching for the Jewish conspiracy theory, right? The, the goal of the European Union is akin to something similar to the United States, right? You're trying to get a unified currency. Tell me if this sounds like the United States. Everybody's on a single currency. Everybody's running on the same monetary policy. The borders aren't enforced between countries because the Schengen area allows for free travel, and you're all part of a unified market that doesn't write its own legislation per country in order to trade with outsiders, right? The, the European yeah, Union is akin to something like the United States, destiny. right? There's one giant difference, Destiny, Globalist. which is that a- MEPs might be, able, like, might be able to propose legislation under certain circumstances, but the fact of the matter is is that the council can just do that whenever they find that they can, and MEPs have very little power in that regard. Yeah, but it's, you can argue the exact same thing. No, 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 hold on. That, you just described the United States, right? That, no, the president no. doesn't get to fucking propose legislation and oh, then hold on. Oh, allow no, no. Congress okay. to vote on it and then just wait until the, the Congress sure. is so, fitting whatever the council says. Sure. Right? So, it's what, a very no, no. different that is, system It's the governance. exact same thing. So number one, presidents absolutely— It's not the exact same thing. It is the thing, exact same thing. thing. Because number one, I can, I can tell you why, okay? It's legislative agendas. Number one, yeah. Number one, presidents have legislative agendas. Number two— who the fuck cares what the House is passing if you can't get it passed through the Senate, right? We might argue that, well, there's a process by which you can write and pass legislation from the House, and that happened a lot under Trump. Pelosi was fucking rocketing so much legislation out of the House, but who the fuck cares? If you don't have a Senate, which is our version of the commission, to pass that legislation, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Maybe in name it does. Like, cool, we got yeah, a lot the of— powers like powers legis- that be don't fucking decide who our senators are, right? <laughs> Our senators are elected after the 17th Amendment, and before the 17th Amendment, they're chosen by the states. It's uniquely different from a deontological position. It's uniquely different because individual, because of the ideas of individual liberty or the, the liberty of those nations. That's why Brexit left. Brexit didn't leave because they were pissed off about their fisheries, right? I mean, you can make an argument that 20 or 30% of the population was pissed off about immigration, right? That like clearly was a, a large motivational force for Brexit, but a lot of it is comes down to ideals enlightenment principles that we've lost in our nation okay right so like wait, you're, wait, you're, i don't okay that, but without getting into the weird f- philosophical stuff right so the mm-hmm. uh, people from the european commission are, are elected members from the members of the european parliament right so these are like the the people you get elected by these member states Right now, it's it would be akin to I think like our House of Representatives. Like once you elect them, they appoint in a representative manner somebody from the House of Representatives to the Senate. But I think that it's it's pretty similar at the end of the day with how yeah, it functions. Yeah, it's it, the, with the issue being that Brussels, Germany, and France have essentially all the power in that system. Wait, hold on, right? no, 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 so, no. But the, so the, the so European so Council is so one member per Pisco's state. Point, right? It would be like the like our issue here in America multiplied by a hundred, right? It would be like if California, New York, and Texas got to right, decide right. who our senators were. For things to pass through EU legis- for EU legislation to pass, don't you need the sign off of the commission that has one member per state in that commission? Yeah. So how is that different from our that's essentially our system now, no? 
it's not. But, but do you agree with this? You're, you're, you're reducing it, right? And then trying to say that they're the same thing as an apology for the EU, I'm and not, as a I'm, means, and then as a means of saying why Brexit was like stupid or something. No, hold right? on, like, okay, Brexit was stupid for a whole bunch of other reasons. Far. I'm not. I'm not. What I'm just saying trying is to that say things are are are, diff, are 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 the same that are similar. What I'm saying is that true. when I, okay, maybe they're not exactly the same. They're close enough though that they might as well be okay. What I'm trying to say no, is that anytime okay. you've got a ton of different things or organizations coming together and these things have different populations within them, it seems to be the case that from a from a, 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 an institutional point of view, it's good to give a one vote per type of thing. Otherwise, you wind up in areas where some of these entities that have joined that don't have as many people are completely and totally irrelevant. That's the only thing can that I would Can we push you on that, Destiny? Can we push you on that? So suppose that everyone from Kansas, mm -hmm. everyone in the country mm -hmm. uh, except for... 10 individuals in the rest of the states moves to California. Do you then think it still makes sense to maintain uh, the same amount of senators per state in those polities? I think it gets... And if, and if you say you couldn't, run the, you couldn't run those states without a few people, just put in the minimum number of citizens it takes... To yeah, that, so that would be my thing state. because, like, th at that point, you could literally toss those states into the ocean and they wouldn't matter. But if you had the minimum number of people around those states, yeah, I think that having every state bought in to your national legislative agenda is really important. I don't like the idea that all those states just become irrelevant because they don't have the population there to support the national agenda. But at no amount of scale. Oh. I mean, suppose that there are just a, no a billion, billion people live in California and <clears throat> they have. Why, why, why are you, why are you, like, just destiny, just dismiss with the argument because it's absurd. That's not happening. What, what well, no, 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 it's a, no, no, hold on, wait, 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 it's to, a good, no, it's a good point, conclusion. no, it's a good point, because California probably no, it's has the population, no, it's like, what if, it's not, no, it's not a trolley problem, hold people. on, it is a real thing that exists right now in the United States, what, isn't it like a, a Wyoming voter has like 13 or 18 times the voting power as like a California voter, like, this is a thing that exists right now, it's not even a hypothetical, like, this is our current system, so I think it's worth addressing, like, the relative imbalances when you look at an institution like the Senate or the Electoral College when it comes to uh, establishing our legislative body in the United States. But it sounds like no amount of imbalance would, no amount of imbalance would would change the needle for you, Destiny. Um, as long as everything you know, is functional, no, it not for me. There are movements in certain states to split their to split their states into multiple to pieces. get more power. I mean, I've heard that. Yeah. So, so what do you think about that kind of gamesmanship? And suppose that you know everyone was on board in uh, in the relevant state. Uh, that's a really. I don't know what the. I don't know how that process will get. That's you need to have five of Congress. You know what we could do? We could have a peaceful divorce in California. No, okay, not, no I, one is no, having a divorce. That can't happen. Can I, can I address this really quick? Destiny wants to for, force the other states into being. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> California can be its country, and the rest of us can have our own. Okay, but there's actually like a moral argument that I don't think I brought brought up before with Pisco, which I, I don't know if he's going to care about, but I don't think we've discussed it before, which is basically like you're looking for the consent of those smaller people who potentially feel fucked over. So, for instance, if we're talking about the EU, EU you could talk about like Hungary or Austria or Poland or, or any of these other countries who are either part of the EU or part of NATO, but they have like a disproportionate influence because of their like geopolitical or geographic history or something. That same thing in the United States with like Kansas or North Dakota or Nebraska or whatever. Part of the way that like when you have controversial legislation that comes through the fucking like the, the federal body is you say like hey guys this got passed with like a very clear like majority 51 to 60 percent or something like that and on top of that we already rigged the game for you so your vote was worth three times that of the major member states so i know that you were concerned about bullying but this is the contract that we already signed and as a result you're just gonna have to abide by the rules because you got outvoted and you're just gonna but have i'm to not worried about the tyranny it. of the majority right now connor i'm, more, I'm worried about yeah. the tyranny of the minority and i think that these uh, destiny might have been right I think in the buildup of the nation where you really wanted buy-in from the smaller states, especially in a time when there wasn't this national character that exists today. But the extent to which we needed that two-state buy-in, and remember that was a fickle thing back then, uh, given the Civil War. I think that, that the need for that has, has lessened, that there is I a mean, national character that people buy so, into that we've so all mentioned this, at the start wait, of this. And how we does don't this play need into toxic uh, causes that uh, politicians take. Uh, as opposed to their political party or their constituency. I'm sorry, let's banning focus on the that electoral, topic that everyone wants to move off of. I mean, no, it's, because it's, banning it's the electoral the college would be toxic. Wait, wait, I'm just curious. This, I just this is just silly. You're, you're you know? myopically focused on the single manifestation of a core essence of an idea, which is responsiveness, responsiveness of democracies, and you only want to talk about one particular manifestation of that issue and an issue that was boring to all of us and that topic we had already sort of fulfilled the conversation after openings do you really want us to go back to that we all said sometimes yeah, they should be responsive and sometimes they shouldn't be what else is there to say uh well there there is you know something to be said for sticking to the topics in a debate or 
Um, you know, uh, oh, I'll, say I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Say this. I'll say this. Like, Shut up. Uh, uh, we, we yeah, such a good moderator, time. man. Holy shit. Thank you, Scott. Uh, uh, what else was I was just asking the question, right? Oh, my like, God. Like, we, 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 guys, I want to ask. So, hey, hey, wait. So, guys, we, like, wander all off all the time. All the time, right? Yeah. Whatever you find the most interesting. We'll talk about that. doesn't matter. Is it fair that Pisco, like, single-handedly brought us to this topic, though? I don't know. Did we want to talk about it? I'm so sorry. I'm like, I, I, I mean, I personally I don't it out there, this man. What, like, I'm not, I'm not married. This is, I, like, I literally... Destiny, I don't, Destiny just moved me. Let's change back just to frustrate people. Does anyone here yeah, think okay. that politicians <laughs> should only look at opinion polls and then just do whatever the opinion polls say? You Everyone like agrees that it, that anyways, to, to so some so extent, okay. The so then, w what more is there to talk about on that on that issue? No one here yeah, is saying. I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, we could talk about the fact that you guys are supporting the wrong fucking parties, but whatever. Is that yeah. the same topic as whether or not, in general, you should always adhere to uh, non toxic political Listen, positions? Go, at least it's he just stand gave stand you an opportunity to make fun of the Libertarian Party for the no, next he's talking shit. I and say we all take him up, and he wants to wander too. Wait, no, can I'm I ask a question? Wait, when do actually, people, actually, when do, when, do, when, do people, when do people okay. in third parties, okay? When do people in third parties can see that maybe their initiatives just aren't popular with the public rather than making four million excuses for why the public just hasn't realized how good their initiatives are yet? When does that happen? Uh, probably probably I mean, because the Democrats have co-opted most of the fucking libertarian. Let's talk about NCAP policies. policies. Let's talk about how you're going to enforce While Democrats your, your are trying to pass contracts. policies that are popular. Who would have fucking guessed? Well, what do you let's have the just say. Well, 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 I mean, it goes, it goes exactly to Destiny's question. NCAP positions and how, how functional Disco, they are. Disco, we're trying to get to Destiny's question, if you don't mind. Okay. I know you're trying to be a lawyer, but yeah, if they just heard the NCAP argument on the age of consent, they'd be pulled over immediately, right? See? I mean, no. Well, I mean, we're we're talking about things like you know how like for example the Libertarian Party was against um, uh, fuck I always forget what it's called Scott the broken windows policing thing we were talking about earlier. You're talking about substantive ah, yes. policies. You're yes. talking about substantive political policies instead of the system that you want. I mean, I would never if I'm trying to like talk about you know institutions and how I want to build my society talk about substantive political that that's a conversation afterwards. First, you you talk about how you want to set up your structures and then you get into substantive policy. Seems what? weird to say, oh, my, what, my what party I, was right about one thing, therefore my system of Pisco, government is correct. Let's go relax for a second. What, I, what I'm saying, <laughs> right, is that politicians in many ways are beholden to their political parties, right? And so, yes, there are some politicians that stray from time to time, but maybe it's time that we start having a, a conversation about how trash many of the Democrat and Republican parties' platforms are, and maybe the issue isn't so much about how much we want to find renegade AOC or Donald Trump individuals right but maybe we should be i don't know supporting third parties because their platforms actually support what is, okay, okay wait platform. what is a what third say that directly? democrats are beating over libertarians because they co-opted libertarian policies yeah i didn't no, say on, that gabby that was just that's you, part you, of it you <laughs> okay to, like, hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. so yeah. so but can we can we also talk about how like because smaller parties are like sometimes small and disorganized and niche they also attract people who like basically don't fit into the mainstream. So for instance, at like the Libertarian Party convention, I think of like 2016 or 2020, there was a fucking naked dude who fucking walked up on stream. And they also booed one of their representatives because he said that he wanted driver's licenses and he wanted to regulate whether or not children <laughs> could go- It was 2016, do, but yeah. Okay, yeah, or whether or not children could do heroin. And as a result, I don't think like, so for instance, if, if at my main party convention, uh, you know, basically people were booing like driver's licenses or whether or not children could do heroin. I would say maybe we need to get our shit together so we're more taken seriously by the broader public than fuck all of y'all. You love our ideas, but you just fucking steal it and then run away with them. I mean, not, I don't know why everyone's in this idea that like I'm coping that like the Democrats stole ideas. I'm simply saying that the Libertarian Party, right, most of their large platform ideas in the 70s and 80s are now the dnc's positions right like being anti-war libertarians have always been anti-war being against the drug war all, you, all you're doing here is making oh argument. all, all you're doing is based on this, what's most popular yeah this, these arguments like the policies change on that. and these arguments right now are making mm -hmm. strong arguments for why two-party systems uh, not only are incredibly resilient and strong, but maybe even should be. Because what you're showing right now is that if there are ideas that become slightly popular in third parties, slightly popular, that they will just be co-opted and represented in the larger main two political parties. So what's the problem? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't disagree they, with that. I don't disagree with that, and I'm not saying that's wrong. You should, that's though, something. because they only adopt them symbolically in order to gain the fucking base, and then they actually don't fall. Democrats 
in yeah, Thai no. war. Come on. I mean, like, like, are we serious? Like, yeah. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah, come on. Which one is it? Wait, hold on. Wait, why do we say come on when we compare, like, what the fuck? Like, Bush got us into fucking Afghanistan yeah, well, and Iraq. Republicans aren't anti war either. What? Republicans aren't anti war either. Which is it? Are Democrats anti war, or were you wrong about saying they co opted the libertarian position? Pro war. Okay, so Republicans and Democrats are both pro war. Did you say they co opted their position? If they're if they're pro war, didn't you just say that they took the libertarians' anti war stance? You were wrong about that, right? No, no, you just said they're pro war. It's it's what kind of thing was saying. Rhetoric. Yeah, that's what I said. Pisco. Sorry, did you say that they took the libertarian peace position? Did you say that? You're conflating. Yes, lawyer. Did you say that? You did say that, and now you just said they're pro war, right? Pisco, I'm not taking your bullshit cloud chasing where you're going to take what I'm saying, right? And then <laughs> the just, words you, know, you say and, and right? see if they're, they're, they're not consistent. Chasing, like, it's cross-examination. That's what it is. And then trying to add them together, right? Uh, I said uh, that the Libertarians were on the right side. How do you possibly look at those two things and say they're consistent? That the Democrats not an idiot, Pisco. The, uh, okay, so explain to me how peace and war... Um, have come together in, think to form a, a straw man of shit I didn't say. Just fucking. Did you, didn't you say the Democrats hey, took I, the. Did you say that? Though? Will you answer the question no, if you said that? Let's go. You didn't say well, that. Okay. I said libertarians well, on the right side well, of history, well, and then I said that they've taken and co opted some positions. Like but peace, right? Like, like peace? Statements. Like peace? Yes. Did, you, did, you, did you mention peace? Who, yes. who else heard peace here? Oh my I don't God. Like heard peace. Okay, he's. Let's okay, go. peace. Back up. Answer your question. No, no, FLS, real quick. Real quick. So, okay, right. but what I'm saying, which I think FLS agrees with, is that Democrats have used libertarian positions rhetorically in order to be popular, widespread, but when you actually look at their policies, they don't actually implement a libertarian agenda, or at least not as much of a libertarian agenda as actual libertarian. Then those ideas were never that popular. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Wait, what? Then those ideas were just never that popular. People didn't give a fuck enough oh. about them to actually see them implemented, then they no, must not I mean, matter like, that much. No, no, that's 100%. I'm sorry. So just let me. I, I'm giving. I'm giving. I'm giving, I'm giving free. Popular, free. But we ignored that one. And then Fabian, I also don't think it really makes a whole bunch of sense to talk about like, oh, well, we had a position back in the '70s, and now it's being adapted. Now adopted now by the. We saw complete because they're like, more. In the 40s and the 60s, right? Like, like we saw crazy party, party shifts between the Republican and the Democratic Party. You can't, then, like, you're basically doing what the Republicans do when they say, well, the Democrats are really the ones that were pro-slavery. Like, you're supporting your pro-slavery. No, I'm not. Party. You're just taking me out of context, right? Well, like, I, like, like, for example, like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example, right? 1972, when uh, the party was formed in 1971. 1972, the presidential candidate was, was a black, openly gay man, and the VP was a female Jew, Right. Yeah, the, the 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 Democrats and the Republicans wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do that for another 40, 50 wait, years. Right, right. No, no, no. That's exactly what I'm talking about, and this is exactly why this is such. But a I'm stupid not saying argument. one party this is, is. This is, is this is dirty. exactly. Oh, this is exactly why this is such a stupid no, argument. Because if you look at something and you look at something back in the 70s, and then you look at all of the social progression that's happened from then till now, then obviously you're going to get an entirely different, like, like practical uh, party now. This is why you can have like a running mate, uh, Kamala Harris, be a running mate now, because we're in an entirely different society. Maybe, maybe and maybe different world. So it, right? if you so if you only look at the party itself, then it, it almost is like you're ignoring all of the other externalities that it, that could have led to these differences. In, uh, maybe changes. maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at maybe I'm framing it improperly. What I'm trying to say is that maybe we are in some way to blame as voters, right, for constantly taking these compromise votes. Right. The same way politicians compromise with their parties and their constituency. And instead, we should be looking at things from a principled position. Right. And if you're a Green Party person, you're a Green Party person. Right. If those are your principles, those are your principles. But I think what is happening is that a lot of people end up voting Democrat or voting Republican. Right. Because they just think, well, at least it's better than the other party. And they're re they're refusing their principles. And instead, they're taking this consequentialist kind of perspective of the ends justify the means. You know, they say that they're for the things I'm for, but we all fucking know that they're not. That's your analysis of the 1970s. Oh, it's, it's, that that it was it was the fact that people were compromising, not the fact that people were just way more racist, anti-Semitic, and sexist back then. You're, you're saying that they were actually very progressive and they were compromising back in the 70s. Hold up. So what, my, what fucking way did I say that? How stupid. That's the you? implication of what you just said. You said no, that you're it's, trying it's to it's draw an implication from a statement from an example. You're being you're, stupid. You're, I'm, no, I don't you're, engage with stupidity. Like just you said that it's the result of people compromising. No, I don't, I don't, engage, just I don't engage with absurd arguments. Just continue and make. All right. Argument.
Okay, so the, wait, hold on. To be clear, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait. I want to be clear. I want to be super clear. So it sounded like your argument was that the Libertarian Party was advancing like two candidates. What did you say? A black person and a Jewish person, and you were like, wow, openly gay person. Yeah, and you're saying like, wow, this is an amazing thing or whatever. And it sounds like you're blaming the party system or whatever for these candidates not advancing. But I think Pisco's counter argument, like, well, maybe back then people just weren't ready for gay black people to be in these positions. I think that's considering our history on gay and black people is that really that controversial of a statement to make no but but he's saying that i said things that i didn't say no but so you're saying that, that if, if people compromise you're oh, saying yeah. the, the result of us having this this slew, slew of candidates that you know the democrats didn't put those uh people forth or the reason why the Liber libertarian party did not be uh was not able to advance that candidate was because of compromising instead of substantive political disagreement which I would no. I mean, this is a non sequitur. Is a, which, like I feel like a, I feel like a lawyer yeah. should just like I don't know go back to undergrad or something. Take like a logic one hundred and one okay. class, right? Like Fuck, these are not. The I'm being illogical. Okay. No, you are. Like you're you're trying to you're trying to straw man put words in my mouth. And it was one of the most words. embarrassing well, syllogisms I've ever Thanks. seen constructed on the spot, Pisco. Just uh, okay. let's go. Hold on, hold on, counterpoints. 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 Yeah, Go ahead. So, whatever. No, so so I had a question actually for um, Destiny since seems he seems to be the person who's like most comfortable with like the two party system or whatever. Hell yeah, I um, love two parties. There, you, I mean, it seems like you do. Uh -huh. um, so the fucking the the question it, or my question would be like, do you have any particular objection to like? Uh, I, I've heard you say in the past that like um, caucuses can oftentimes represent uh, the diversity in political thought that the two party system doesn't. Um, do you have any problems with kind of like the uh, what, what do they call that? Like rank choice choice voting, where if like people want to make a different gets type to of do yeah, the if people worst wanna... of two evils. Yeah, or if whatever, it, I, we know then... what rank. I know what rank choice is. Yeah, if anybody wants to do rank choice voting, that's fine. Maybe the yeah. Listen, buddy, you're fucking everybody everybody knows what ranked choice voting is genius. because it's one of the hot button topics, okay? Listen, I'm about oh, to give some God. free, more free Everyone's live advice genius. to every third party person here, okay? All the progressives, okay? P there are so many people in this country that walk around and their thoughts are, everybody would vote for my people if they just lived by their principles or knew what we stood for, okay? At some point, okay? At some point, I know we just went through a whole opioid crisis and we had marijuana shit. At some point, the copium is going to run out and you've got to realize... Maybe my positions, my policies just aren't actually as popular to the American people as, as I wish they were. Or maybe I actually, for the most popular policies I have, I have so much overlap with the mainstream parties that nobody would actually look and, and consider our uh, positions. I, I, think that it's, I think that at some point people have to stop thinking that everybody would vote for me if they just knew what my show was. Progressives do the same shit in the U.S. and I see third party people do all the time. And it's like a non-argument. You can't engage with it. Like, okay, yeah, I guess they would all vote if they live by their principles. I don't know how anybody's supposed to argue against that. I mean, I'm not asking you to prove a negative or anything. No, but you're, hold on, stop using the, the, the debate terms, Jesus. Uh, the problem is that, like, you. it seems like the feeling that I get, maybe it's just me because I'm not listening well or whatever, the feeling that I get is always this idea that, like, everybody would vote for us if they were just a little bit smarter or if they just knew a little bit more or if they understood us. But at some point, whether it's no, 30 or 40 or 50. Never said that. You literally yeah. said that. You <laughs> literally said that. Listen, I think That's you're having flashbacks to when the liberty. No, the libertarian party just isn't getting their... popular enough because of other people, because other people don't like the specific identity of those yeah, candidates. So many... You're blaming it on the voters rather than the campaign staff who probably no. fucked up, rather than the or you can, or let's just let him answer. Every why, why, why do you I, think these third parties aren't as popular? I hate the fucking government, right? I fucking hate the idea of government, but I have to engage with it, right, as much as possible. I'm simply suggesting, right, that maybe. Right. Instead of trying to find maverick candidates that go against your party. Right. Instead of voting down ticket and being like, we've got to stop the Republicans. So we're going to vote Democrat. And I'm going to try and find a maverick Democrat that'll push the Democratic Party in the position I want. Right. And then you just end up voting 90 percent of the time. Results in Trump. Politicians that you don't Trump fucking in small like. government. Trump is in small government. That just results in Trump. If, if everyone had listened to you. We would be. We would have Trump. The Democrats listen to you. That is. That is. That is, that is ridiculous. How is the, it's the opposite? It's an oh my God! No, Obama was opposite? small government, and that got us Trump. Is that what you're saying? Because Obama no, was no. nothing but. If small people government. listened to you and didn't vote for Biden no, if, because they're waiting for like the, the Libertarian candidate, presumably. Let's say mm -hmm. you're talking to a largely Democrat audience right now, or or left wing audience right now. We would have President Donald Trump second term. Maybe. And and that's not small government in my mind. I mean, neither is Biden. Neither is okay, Biden. so but, yeah, you don't know, like, what's the argument about this big government that isn't horrific like Trump, and it's and it's I think better. Or, or okay, do you, I mean, you, you can, you can, have, an argument, you can have an argument about whether or not Trump or Biden is better, right? I'm simply saying, right, that you 
But don't look the consequences. Don't engage with this entirely new. Everyone discussion. dies, or everyone's worse off, or people. You know who cares if people are Wait, actually like in what are you talking you know, about? conditions. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, this, about. This, nothing, this is not a new discord. This isn't a new discussion. This is like literally like the fallout from exactly what you're talking about. Like a lot of times, we people end up choose the, choosing the le lesser of two evils because otherwise, evil is uh, evil. Right, well, okay, it's not sure. the lesser. No, sure, hold on. But there, and, sure, sorry. sure. Evil is evil, but let's not act like there aren't degrees to things, right? Like Donald Trump can have an entirely different evil, and so people oftentimes can recognize that, like the harm that this person is doing to the environment, like uh, all of them rolling back regulations and all sorts of nonsense. That these things are worthy of saying, "I'd rather a Democrat than to have four more years of this guy," because it literally seems like we could probably like um, end up in a civil war if we give him four more years, and that might outweigh anything else. So, like, I, I don't know. It, 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 it seems nice to just be able to say, "I don't care about co consequences." I don't care about how anything is am uh, implemented. I don't care about like any practicality whatsoever. All I'm saying is that like we just shouldn't. We should just stop doing this thing. And it, it's an easy position that you get from your ridiculous and capitalist. I'm not saying, those things. saying those things. You right? are basically. That's I'm not. You 100 percent saying that. No, what I'm saying is that it, you should vote if you're going to vote at all. You should vote for your principles, right? When you vote for the lesser of two evil, right? What you, you, end up, you, you end up with You're a just shit repeating standard. yourself, Fabian. But no. my point is, if voting your principles is a, if, if voting your principles, the outcome of that is to get four more years of Donald Trump, then at this point, your principles don't mean anything. You can repeat all day. I think you should vote your principles. We're saying here's the negative ramifications for well, voting your principles. problem. Is, the problem is, is that you're you're engaging with probability, and you don't know what the future outcomes are. So you go away from your own ethical positions, right, in order to vote the lesser of two evils in the hopes that it's better than the outcome of the other evil, but you voted in evil. You're right? assuming okay, the less, let's you just, don't let's just, let's, just, let's just get this out of the way, hold on. This right. never needs to be said again, okay? Every single election that you do is the lesser of two evils. There is never going to be a non quote unquote evil thing because you're never going to have a candidate that 100% represents every single position that you have. So th that idea of voting between the lesser, it's still evil, it's still evil. Like, that's gonna be every single election ever unless you're literally voting for yourself. So that is a total nonsense argument. Well, you could vote for yourself. It's, True. <laughs> yeah, but it's completely pointless if you're not going to win. The perfect voted, is the I enemy of the good. The times. perfect is completely the enemy of the good. There's never Joshua for Congress is not going to be running for president and get every single leftist vote out there tweeting out the craziest shit or that guy who say we shouldn't have driver's licenses or licenses to put a toast in your own damn toaster is going to be winning anytime soon. Ironically enough, Wait, if we're just saying we should just vote for third parties because it matches our principles the most, but it actually doesn't result in our principles being passed. It doesn't result in any sort of co-ops. Oh, All God. it results in our vote not fucking matters. Mattering. Ironically enough, by voting for Libertarian or Green, you are being antithetical to your own principles. You're using yeah, your own principles. This is, this is also a strategy. You're evil. actually fucking yourself over. If you're no, voting is, for no, evil and you admit it. It's, it's, it's not voting, voting for evil. You are voting. People yes, are not literally saying, yes, okay, is. people are literally looking at the platforms between Democrats and Republicans, and they see that the Democratic platform aligns better with their values than what Republicans are. It's not, oh, I think the Democrats are less evil. It's that the Democrats align with my policies better. True. That's what they believe also, is the Fabian, less Fabian. evil, which is part of the same they hypocrisy. Based on what can get their principles passed the most. So if they oh, believe the God. Democratic platform does it better, they can vote Democrat. Not fucking vote third party where they get two fucking votes, nobody ever cares, and then Joshua for Congress walks away with 0.7% of the entire fucking vote to a dead guy. Fabian, also you're part of the same hypocrisy because by your own admission, you are compromising by engaging in this electoral process because we have no choice. Agree. We have no choice. Okay, no choice. then you're doing the same thing. You're not aligning with your principles because you're not voting for people who who call for the end of the American government. And so you're engaging in the same hypocrisy that all wait, of wait, us are wait. doing. You know what? Wait, he is he, he is aligning with his values so much better by voting for people who can at least, from a strategic, pragmatic perspective, try and get some degree of his policies pushed than just trying to go full fucking third party and just pray, just hope that maybe maybe if voters are is stupid maybe we somehow get enough money maybe we just get enough retweets on twitter that maybe somehow we'll get enough to win a local city council seat uh can i please for the love of god fucking isn't he engaged in the same compromise that we are he's voting for lesser two evils which is someone who more aligns with his principles but they're not saying they're anti-government entirely so so you can, I'll, I'll you can chew on your button in a second. FLS, please, for the love yeah. of God, because I, I think I can fucking give y'all a bridge to cross, and then you can fucking burn it right in front of my face. Connor, um, the great so, mediator. So like, 
Let's get it. Um, the fucking centrist. Centrist cop. Centrist cop. <laughs> Shrugging. So, okay, so, I mean, what this really boils down to, because, like, FLS, we, we've actually had this conversation in the past where you said, like, you you have, like, a principled analysis from deontology. You don't want to violate your principles in order to do a lesser of two evils. You utilitarian calculus, and on top of that, because we're, uh, a majority of us are making utilitarian calculi to justify our evil shit. That's why evil shit in the world is being perpetuated, okay? And then yep. this, this can also boil down to, like, individualism versus collectivism, uh, because, like, liberal and liberal uh, libertarianism is individualistic. Um, fa uh, fascism and communism are oftentimes uh, collectivist. Okay, and then so my point being is that like there there is another option which is communitarianism or the you know the mix between the two, which is basically like having your principles, trying to violate them um, as little as possible, but still using the utilitarian calculus as much as you can without like necessarily grossly violating your principles. And the reason why I bring this up is not because like I I'm trying to get the the utilitarian to stop being utilitarian or trying to get the individualist to stop being individualist, but because it's like, um, for, for you guys, it kind of seems like if everybody got on the same page and we all start practicing individualism and our principles and all that kind of stuff, the world would be a better place collectively, but because we don't, we fail that. But non-participation is also not bloodless. You can have like your hands clean because you didn't participate in the fucking system or whatever, but your lack of participation also does like foster different fucking outcomes. So that's but, what I'm saying. It's like you have to you have to have a conversation between these two moral paradigms, or else you end up completely in Peace Coast camp where you just want everybody to do heroin, including two year olds, or you end up in FLS's fucking what camp the hell? and you want hold on and you want everybody to do heroin, including two year olds. So, uh, but for different reasons. But there's so, so there's a difference. In, so, so what you're the problem is you're creating an either or scenario, right? Like there's yeah. dual power theory. There's the idea of like voting local sheriffs in, right? That are that align with all of your views that are libertarian, like anti drug war and pro Second Amendment, right? There's agorism, right? Like refusing to engage um, with laws in, in terms of the economy and just circumnavigating shit, like you know, um, you know, individuals that let's say sell raw milk by you know selling uh you know memberships to a community or selling it as pet milk or things like that right like there are, there are other ways of engaging uh, the fight against the state that don't require you to you're vote voting and you're compromising party. aren't you you're, you're voting for someone who doesn't align with you politically perfectly and in fact almost uh, to i don't know if there's any libertarian candidate who says i want to dissolve the american government and so aren't you engaged in the very same hypocrisy that you're accusing us of I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay, so then don't criticize that. us for that. He's no, no, no. Not. I mean, he's not the engaging same. that. You what can, are you, you talking can be about? a hypocrite and still say that something is wrong, right? It doesn't change the argument. I fully and wholly admit, right, that I have voted in my life and that that is a moral conundrum that I personally struggle with. Because well, I'm exactly not sure problem, whether or not, Fabian. right? It's, like I'm, it's, I'm it's, okay with, I'm okay with saying that I'll, uh, that I'll take that L, right? And you're and it's, not, it's, not being about being an L. it's really hypocritical, and I mean, it's not just about being a hypocrite either. It's almost like it's really short-sighted, right? Because most of the time, I think most of us would admit like that we're not trying to operate out of hypocrisy. The problem is, like, once your hands are tied and you're kind of forced into doing something, then it's like, okay, so now we've done that. We've we've made this hard choice, right? We like we had no choice, and so we did whatever we we did whatever the freak we had to do and so like that's the world that we're in right now and it's almost like you're posturing around this idea about like oh man you know if people didn't do that thing it would be, it wouldn't be a problem and it's like no but you've been given the same opportunity and you've made those decisions because that's pretty yeah, much i've made mistakes only, right right it's not like, no 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 it's, it's no, okay no, 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 no 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 it's yeah. not just about it's yeah, not it's a it's mistake not, it's not it's not yeah. just about it's not just about making a mistake it's about the fact that you literally don't have a choice so you're doing the same thing that everyone else is doing when that's presented with true. the exact that's when when presented, when when presented with the exact same options and instead now on the other side having done that now you're like trying to like cast aspersions against everyone else for doing the same I'm not thing casting that you know that you've done. Right? Yeah, you are about... dude you're saying maybe if people didn't compromise we'd have a better life but you're compromising by your I, own I, admission okay. Yes, I don't th absolutely right, but that doesn't mean that you can like we're engaged. We're not we're like I'm not the arbiter of the fucking universe, right? Like we're engaged in a discussion about like how we can make things better, what our problems are, how we can. That's solve consequentialism problems. talking. You said evil is That's evil. It was categorical. Yes, you are. What you're doing you is don't a total. Know a con please define consequentialism. Then, so you're basing <laughs> your decision. Your decision making is based on outcomes. It's based on consequences because you're telling me that notwithstanding the fact that who you're voting 
voted for is evil. They don't agree that we should shut off the government and we should no, do that. The, no, you're, you just it, you just equated ethics with consequentialism because you don't your know what you're making about. opera. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, just to so be clear, smart. wait, just to be clear, consequentialism is a totally valid normative ethical system. To say that equating ethics to consequentialism is you don't understand consequentialism is ridiculous. You don't understand consequentialism or normative ethics. That's what you're trying to say. Stop using the fucking debate bro terms. Go back to the argument. Jesus. No, 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 no. no. There are three forms of normative ethics. Virtue yes, ethics, you've got virtue ethics, deontology, and consequentialism. And consequentialism is a totally valid application of any meta ethical theory. I'm just saying, don't just stop saying. Stop, stop, no, 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 how are you not? How are you not? I was engaging in How are you not? How are you not? I was engaging because I'm engaging in virtue ethics and I'm engaging in deontology. I'm sorry. How are you engaging in virtue ethics by voting? By I just. Oh my God! I'm. How many times are you going to equate things I'm not saying and then you link vote, them together? Right? You vote. It seems oh like God, everybody on that so... panel is having a problem rephrasing what you're saying. I don't know if that's all of our problems or. Well, maybe maybe if we were all just smarter, we would all understand what he's saying. You know, maybe you said voting was wrong. Made, you said they all listen to our panel. Yes, if they all actually understood wrong. the vote, so, actually, the so you do. So you do wrong things, don't you? Yes, you do. have done bad things. Okay, so then there's a whole list of bad things. Some what's of them are the right thing to do? Boys. What's 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 the right thing to do? Is it something you can say? In my on, opinion, on... in my opinion, would be not to vote. See, oh, hold okay. on, hold on. But you guys just missed it. Gappy just annihilated anarchism and individualism because we're all too fucking stupid to be anarchists or individualists because we can't even grasp what's being told to us. So I think the Libertarian Party should be fucking disbanded because we're not fucking ten head enough in order to participate in narco capitalist, uh, you know, fucking oh. politics. Uh, okay, at the end First of, of all, end you don't all have to be there. <laughs> you just let me have my little place. Yeah. You guys can stay. We'll here elect America. you the king of anarcho capitalism. Sounds no, you good. just give us no some king. land and let us do our thing. You don't all got to come, boys. Getting getting back to the actual original issue, I don't think what what Scott what Scott is suggesting by just voting for a third party, I don't think that it's um it's. Oh, he said don't vote. Sorry, no, no, sorry. He said oh. don't vote. Don't vote. Okay, well we're saying don't vote. I don't think if it's they, that's your prescription, right? Don't vote. <laughs> my personal prescription. Not vote for a third party. party? Pisco, why do you keep answering questions with things that I'm saying <laughs> and then yelling at me when I'm trying to answer the goddamn question? <laughs> if you're going to ask me a fucking question, let me answer the question. My personal moral position is that it is wrong to vote. My, my position for the rest of you people that clearly believe that voting is moral, I'm simply saying maybe if you voted on your principles, we'd be in a better position. There are ways to get towards the end goal. Right? Okay, I, I'm, I'm not, 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 not going to leave this fucking anarchy. Nah, if we're, if we're not really voted, that, if that you're thing not... that you're talking about only is even remotely close to possible in a world in which literally, like, there is a specific party, right? Because right now we're in a dichotomy, dichotomy right? Like, we have the, obviously the Republicans and Democrats. Neither oh, one yeah. of those Right, so neither one of those parties fully encompass like what I believe in at all, right? Like right. You, you you can't. So then obviously, then that means now, if I'm voting my principles, that means I'm still going to be torn between which which principles I value more than the others, right? Because like the the conservatives are going to have certain values certain that I value, and then, you, so then at this, absolutely. so then now you're saying I should just 100 withhold my vote until one party fully encapsulates everything that I believe in, and all the rest of Americans should do that as well. And as, and when we all recognize how broad politics can be, then that means now you're basically just advocating for the entire country not to vote. Guys, listen, I you might as well just have a monarchy. Wait, 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 wait I, can I, you respond? If can we, you respond to that really quickly, Fabian? Did, 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 did anything I say there was any of that wrong? What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that the most moral position, from my opinion, you're not going to answer my question. Okay. He's Got getting it. there. I'm I'm answering your there. question. He won't. Stop getting triggered. I'm Go saying ahead. the most moral position for, that I believe in is not voting. That being said, it is more moral to follow your principles as best as possible than to abandon your principles for the sake of winning. Wait, so to be clear, uh, so in the, in the, in the hypothetical, wait, one second, one second. So in the hypothetical that, when the hypothetical that Fnatic just gave, are you saying that it would still be immoral in that situation to vote for that person who totally agrees with every one of your positions? I mean, if you magically found someone that voted for that, that believed in like literally every one of your positions and you volunteer, like it would still be immoral from the sense that it's a government, right? And like if you're giving them power and they win, there will be people that disagree with that person. And it's still tyranny of the majority. It's still it's still against freedom. It's still against liberty. It's still against. Yeah. But isn't it? But isn't it? Wait, one second. But isn't it? But it you, wait, hold on. But we're, when we're talking about serious things like like war or like uh, civil rights, things like this, mm -hmm. if you if you remove yourself. 
from the equation because you're hung up on a, a particular position that a politician might have. Like, right. Isn't that immoral? Because because now you're not you're, removing you're, you're in effect, the equation. You're just not well, you voting. are. You, yeah. Well, you not voting is this, is in this, fact this a vote for the other side because you not voting it means you not voting means they get low and less vote right where they would have had to vote otherwise. So you're in effect helping their opposition, right? So why isn't well, that immoral? Well, because you're you're playing into the immoral paradigm by giving into it in the first place. That's what exactly. I would say. No. But, say, but, but hold on. I've been trying to meme for fucking 10 minutes. Nobody's letting me do it. This is just fucking like ANCAP accelerationism, though. He's telling everybody to vote on your fucking principles. That way, worse and worse fucking political parties get into the fucking state. They trash everything. And then we all become anarchists. So this is just ANCAP accelerationism. But you're immoral if you do that. The problem, the problem, but you're immoral if you do that. Well, why would I not want anarchism? Like, it's, 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 it's because the point, wait, wait, it, because, Just to be clear. This the fact like this is like year one of your life that you should learn this. Okay, inaction is a form of action, and to pretend it's otherwise not, is to be intellectually is. and morally bankrupt. There's, there's, we, there's know this, we know this. We know that we know this intuitively. No. If you're standing next to a child that falls into a pool and you watch him drown when you could lean over pick him up, even in an intuitive sense, people will like condemn you for your moral inadequacies. Okay, and we know this on a larger sense. If not you look Lucas. At, we could yeah maybe not. If you look at the outcomes of events, for instance, no, let's say there's a party that would vote against war and another party that would vote for war and part of your personal beliefs is to be morally opposed to war but you decide to withhold your vote because you believe that acting within that paradigm somehow like makes you an evil person you are putting a finger on the other end of the scale by removing a finger from the other and that's how it works right uh, destiny you yeah. have revealed yourself see this is the problem with consequentialism right because you're engaging with probability the system itself is evil every president with the exception of joe biden for the last hundred years has run as an anti-war president. Even Ronald Reagan ran with the idea of fighting the Cold War to not have open warfare, oh, right? It wasn't until later that he was like, oh, we got to stop them there so we don't have a mass global war. He even, even his pro-war What does this have to do with anything Obama that Obama ran as a pro-war okay, okay, candidate. Obama ran as an anti-war candidate. Wait, no, 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 Afghanistan war. No, no, he's pro-Afghanistan war. Re uh, I'm sorry, didn't you, did no, you miss no, my that statement? Was was he ran no, 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 it wasn't. He was in a debate. Read the book. Read him. Re watch the debates where he's he's. It doesn't on matter. It doesn't war. matter. Fuck Obama. It doesn't matter. It doesn't he, matter. He, 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 Fabian. Yeah, no, he Fabian. didn't. Wait, he was hold on. Wait, 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 Fabian. Can you respond to the the initial the initial question? Right. So if if a child is drowning and someone has the ability to save that child and they do nothing. What, yeah, no, no, would you no, not morally no, condemn no, that person? Like, well, so he's he's attributing to me a position I don't hold. I'm not saying well, that not that's voting. I'm, I'm not saying that not voting is is an in is is not a form of action. I'm saying it is a form of action. It's a choice that I make to not vote. To yeah, not. But can you what, can you answer? System. I'm just curious for the child drowning in the bathtub. Do you think that would be immoral to not save the child? Yeah. Obviously. Okay. okay, so no, if you, let's say, wait, 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 hold on. So let's say that there are 100 people in a room, okay? And let's say there are two candidates, or there are three candidates that come up. One is pro-war, murder everybody. The other one is pro-war, murder a couple people. And the other one is your ideal anti-war person. But you know that that ideal anti-war person is never going to win, okay? But you know that the ultra pro-war person, that guy is going to get 48 votes. Do you join the other, you know, 49 people voting for the lesser that, war that, person? Or so do you withhold? The, the, that's the thing I was talking about with the probability, right? Hold on. That, wait, wait, no, like, no, wait, stop. Please stop. Wait, no, no, just stop using You're words. assuming okay. probability. I'm, you're yeah, assuming probability. Because, every, because that's you? the we world live we live in. It's a probabilistic reality. Oh, yeah, hold on. You are part of a system, whether you like it or not, where your vote can change the outcome of, you can't remove yourself from that system by not voting. You're still part of it, right? I mean, I'll just quote Emma Goldman here. If voting changed anything, they wouldn't let you do it. That, okay, oh, come on. You don't what believe a, that. What an absolutely what? ridiculous stupid statement. AOC got it. That's how the justice Wait, no, 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 done all the shit. But I'm just saying that by, by, not, by not voting, you are actively supporting, whether you like it or not, through outcome, the winner that you probably don't want the most by not voting for the guy no, that you would have agreed to at least partially. That's, a, that's, that's just a bullshit argument. It's, okay, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's bullshit. It's, you're saying it's, it's bullshit. It doesn't make it bullshit. Factually and factually true. Wait, hold on. Because you, you're, you're engaging you with probability. I don't know. Oh, God. Well, the alternative that would your in this, you're not you're not engaging in your principles. For, hold on, the none of this has to do with probability. Even this is engaging it with does. it does. It, it does. does. No, 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 you're assuming that, that you have the 48 percent on the it, hold on. It, is, it is it is not engaging with probability. What I'm saying is, problem. let's say it that is. you have you functionally have a choice between a really bad candidate. You voted for Obama, right? You don't worry about who I voted for, okay? You could. I you voted for Ron Paul, but thank God I grew up, okay? So listen, you have you have two choices, okay? I love it. You've got you've got. Right, two, two choices between two candidates that can realistically win. One is a super evil guy, and one is a kind of evil guy. And you could be the deciding vote between the two, 
You abstaining. D from destiny, that no, right there, right there. You're sneaking in the probability, right there. You okay. could be. Never mind. No, that's everyone is publicly committed. No, no, no. Believe it or not, when you're you vote, there's a chance though. that your vote might actually you're be the you're one that decides. Joe Biden, right? Yes, when you have you're the probability. You're the probability. You might be the one that, out of the two of the. Believe it or not, when there's three people in a room and they all decide where to go and fucking eat, you might be one of the two people who end up being the majority decision. I don't know why we're suddenly saying, "Oh, well, we have no idea what." No, the problem is that it's the problem is the problem is that I'm trying to use a real world. The problem is I'm trying to use a real world example, but they're ANCAP, so they can't engage with it. That's the problem. They can't engage with hyper. One second, one second, one second. We're too fucking. It's even. It's even. If we were all just smart enough to understand their platform and we all just went through a bunch of more of the meetings, we would all fucking understand it. That's great. So, but Fabian, I think I think it's even worse than than you're saying because. You're not just you right now. You're on a platform in front of thousands of people, and you're mm -hmm. encouraging these people not to vote. You're actually telling them that it's Absolutely. immoral to vote, right? So if Absolutely. we were to look at like recent elections, some of these elections have been razor fucking thin, right? Where where the the ability of someone like you to get on a platform and to encourage people not to vote because it's immoral if they're not voting one thousand percent for for every principal position they have uh, might might sway elections in some places, right? So, yeah, so let's I, say, let's say but here's the thing, right? You, you vote for Joe Biden, right? And let's say you vote for Joe Biden. You're like, oh, awesome, right? You have to understand that you're engaging in supporting a system that perpetrates so much evil. And the idea that like, oh, well, the Democrat is going to be slightly less evil than the Republican. You're voting not just for the candidate, but for the system itself. And the system itself is one that upends countries in fucking in 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 fucking regime change wars that has been doing fucked up shit since long since the fucking Eisenhower. Yeah, just, just, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, just, okay, 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 this isn't, this isn't even philosophically had, wrong. This is just absolutely wrong. You support the system course. by living and existing here. That's how the That's system is supported. True. Absolutely, absolutely true. true. If, 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 you if, pay if, taxes. If, if here, every here, single libertarian, if every single libertarian country stopped voting, you're not doing a single thing to upend the system. System. If our voter turnout rate was ten percent, you're not doing a single thing right, to upend the system. You're keeping it in the box. Of no, 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 no. You pay taxes, don't you? Fabian, do you pay taxes? 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 Hold on, Fabian. If you had a situation where you recognize my threat of violence, yes. Fabian, if you had a situation, you support the system. Fabian, if you were in a situation, no, I'm not supporting the system. Fabian, if you were in a situation where you had like I don't know a president that like literally was running on genocide, he was 100% telling you that he was going to do genocide, and like that, like that's that's why he wanted to become president for for that power to be able to do so. Okay, he was going to do it through executive order immediately day one. Okay, and you knew that he was running on that. However, like maybe you know whatever, like that, that, that that's what the Republican. I, my answer to your question is not TOS friendly. I got. That's my answer to your question. No, you're pulling so, a video. If you can't even organize people into a fucking sure. convention so room, your non-US friendly saying, answer is never going to sure, fucking happen. I'm sorry. Sure, just to make sure, just to make sure. So you're saying that you believe that it would be it would be immoral. I'm sorry, it would be moral to abstain from voting yes. knowing that the president was going to commit Jewish yes. genocide. Uh, and it would also it, it would also be moral. Down. It would also be moral to water the tree of liberty with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Yep, it's, okay. and you're, and you're, and you're, so it, would be, it would be it would be just as immoral to vote against him. No, it would be less for, a, for a, I mean, it would be less. So the the reason why but, people vote in these systems, despite them feeling that not both parties match argument. what they want, is completely because they believe in their fucking principles. That they are far more principled than anyone who votes for a third party, and they understand that they're not going to be able to fucking delete the system within the next fucking several preference. months. Okay, those are so instead of just instead of just abolishing and saying, ah, oh, well, we can't do that. You can't just imagine. Happy, do you know the difference between those preferences principles. and principles? You know the difference principles. between principles and Explain layers. it to us. Explain it to us. What's the difference? Well, I'm asking you. Do you know it? System, okay? I don't know how you mean it. They are trying to progress their principles through this fucking system, okay? It's not literally, I am trying to make sure that electoral politics stay in. They're voting because they want to make sure DACA stays on. They're just voting because they want to keep their fucking health care or some shit. Those are the principles they're fucking fighting for, it's unless we're trying to get into some philosophical Why fucking bullshit and do more fucking trolley. Explain it, Smarties. Smarties, explain it. position is not a principle. It's fucking Lucas. You do it. Lucas, no, you do it. No, 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 uh, you. Oh, oh someone okay, it. it. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, that's fine. I'll do it. So the the a principle is something that you hold like in a moral weight, right? Like in more weight than a preference. Those are okay, you gonna allow, are, you gonna, are you gonna allow me to fucking speak, or you're just gonna keep talking over me, like you've been doing for this whole panel to everybody? Okay, thank you. 
Uh, so a principle, it's a, it's a moral position that you hold. So it's like a line that you're not willing to cross for something, right? A preference is something that, all right, you know, this is kind of bad, but I'll take this over this. That You're not doing that based on principle. That's a preference. So principle is something you would never cross, right? It's a line. Yes, it's a line yeah, that so, you said. That's okay, so when I, you I, vote, you're, you're breaking principles, right? Okay. And Both I, of you. And, and I'm sorry. We I'm have sorry already to answered it, that. We've already I'm answered sorry to break it. Why do you keep the, going back to it? Because my, my question is, are you planning to vote in the future, Lucas and Fabian? No, I'm not planning on voting in the future. Lucas, will you, will you ever will you commit to not voting in the well, future? No, actually, local sheriff election where it aligns with all of my all of my ideas. So, yeah, so as there, a system of fighting the system itself. But wait, no, sorry, that's a compromise. Only if it's it? fighting the system itself. I mean, so, no yeah. sheriff is going to say I want to destroy rule of law that empowers yeah, no, my no. office, right? Well, sheriffs might say things you, like I want, I will intentionally not enforce the drug war, and I will no. But, it, but you're talking about this, his, his, right, his office. The, the fact of a police officer existing, a sheriff existing, is an affront to your uh, philosophy, isn't it? Or sorry, your your political framework. The fact of a sheriff, sheriff uh, like as mm -hmm. a public office. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so you voting for a sheriff itself would be a compromise and unethical, wouldn't it? Well, I just said because it would be against the system itself. Do you think there's going to be a sheriff who's a, who is in favor of abolishing his office? There are already, but you know. You know. Wait, hold on. Okay. But you're so wait, here, wait one here, second. I mean, like, are, wait, are they going to be? Uh, so I you said be you said that there you said that there might be a sheriff that refuses to enforce a certain law, but they'd still be enforcing other laws that you uh, that you probably have an issue with, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you still for, vote for that sheriff, even though he's going to be enforcing those other laws, because he's yes. he's not. Okay, then oh, why are you encouraging Scott, people? Scott is oh, why gosh, are you encouraging people? Brilliant so, point. Right. Then, then why are you encouraging people not to vote for for dev, for politicians that they agree with because they might be uh, opposed to some other principal position that they have? Because if you if you're if you're saying that you would do that, if you're saying that you would do that, why why are you here encouraging people not to do that? The reason oh, why Scott would be fucking fundamental okay. fucking position here, okay? The, Thank the you, fundamental, Jonathan. okay. The, the fundamental fucking position here is the fact that they don't want to fucking violate a principle because if a principle is a malleable by the threat of force, hold on. If if a principle is malleable by the threat of force and you hold a principle because somebody is threatening it, uh, you with that fucking principle, then they don't view that as a principle. They view it as a preference. But hold on, because there's a fucking underlying argument for this entire thing, which uh, I don't think Lucas or FLS fucking believe in, but I do, which is basically, it, it, I'm going to butcher it again, but it's from a story from the Pavala Gita. It's basically like a young prince who's about to go into battle against some of his family members, and he's wishing that he didn't have the mantle of responsibility oh. and the mantle of power, and he's like talking to, to God or some shit. Yeah, and then fucking, and then God basically says like, "Hey, you running into the forest is its own form of action," and like you're in the, I'm gonna butcher it, but like you're in the fucking stomach of the world already. Guess what? You don't really have inaction as an option to you. Like you are going to have to make a choice here. And as a result, he you know basically grew some nutsack, and he said, "All right, I'm gonna go do the battle so I can you know manifest my power in the world in order to make the world a better place." So totally fucking butchered it. All the fucking Hindu people can get butthurt about it. My point is that if you extract this principle and then you apply it, my lesson from this is that power is going to be manifested in the world regardless of whether or not your fucking principles are. The only thing that you can do is you can fucking incrementally change the world through your rhetoric and through your influence on people around you in order to have like a, like an incremental... I don't um, believe in that though. Agenda. Yeah, but that but that's because like I, I, I feel like I feel like the worldview is fundamentally flawed because they view inaction I as I do too. So let's put let's put the fire to them and, and, and get public commitments that unless you're voting for a sheriff who wants to abolish their office or a politician who wants to destroy America, you are not going to vote. I want public but, but, commitments but, but, for both of you. But this isn't. But this isn't how principles work. And I wish I could. No, that's how it works for them. Lucas. No, no, no. no that's, Lucas, they just no. Can, can, wait. That's how it works for them. Lucas just said it's a line that you do not cross. And I'm assuming it's that not. you are not going to. That you don't no. want to do anything immoral. So I want public commitments from both of you. That unless the politician you're voting for Here, here's the prosecutor. Wants to here's the prosecutor. Here's no, the will, prosecutor. You, will, will you commit to it? Will you <laughs> commit to it? Lucas is young. I have hope for him. FLS is older. No, I have public commitments. You should have public commitments. Will you commit to it, yes or no? Will, will you commit to it? Pisco, I already said yes. Okay, okay. Lucas? But, but like the rest of the time, you haven't been listening. Okay, I didn't okay, hear you. But, okay. Yeah, Lucas? Lucas, just say yes or no. Come on, let's go. Yes. Uh, I got I got okay. the kick. Okay, okay. okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So <laughs> I just, just want to say that like, so for the young people out there, inaction is its own action. And I don't think that a principled inaction, when you can see the demonstrable harm in the world, is, is something that you need to get behind. And this is actually this is actually like a, a fascist talking point um, that I kind uh -oh. of heard is like, hold on, hold on. 
Power is going to be power is going to be implemented one way or the other. It, all you can do is you can have an influence on the power that's wielded in the world. And from my Interest experiences, cop. okay, and because of my <laughs> because of my experiences with law enforcement and the military, power uh -oh. ab power abhors a vacuum. So all you can do is you can have principled power that's responsive to the population that it serves, and that's the best you can do. I do not think anarchism is possible at all. Are they Mostly really serving because us? Because we don't have enough fucking brain power to get on FLS's fucking tier, dude. No, none of us do. Okay, they're not, so they're not. We need the are state. Are they really to, serving us? Uh, yeah, they're not serving Wait, you guys on. because think... you guys have no fucking. You have nobody in the fucking country wait, who agrees so, with that type of wait, platform wait, who cares wait, about wait. that compared to any other fucking party that's available. Wait, so you're Lucas, just committed to right. not voting, and you want us to like support the Libertarian Party. The Libertarians themselves are just committed to not voting for the Libertarian Party. We yeah, literally I mean, yeah, said you might, that you we might agree with him about, Wait, no, 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 no. about something. No, no, we never oh, said we wouldn't God. vote. We said we wouldn't vote for somebody that disagrees with our principles. Right. Well, libertarians right. so, but, but I don't agree with that. We said, wait, wait, wait. Some that libertarians do what we're talking that's, about. That's, yeah, well, and that's okay, also no, wait, hold on. But no, Lucas, 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 what you guys have been saying is that unless somebody exists in the hypothetical that fanatic presented, right, where they 1,000% support every one of your positions, it would be a moral to vote for that person. That's what you guys have been saying. Yes. Right, so I, I don't yes. think I don't think I don't think either of you can find anyone in the libertarian parties that has exists today, right? That that is that for you, right? So both of you are telling people I mean, that right, you wouldn't vote I for also, anybody in the libertarian right, party. But, but telling I also, people, us too. Right, but I also said that I would vote for someone, right? That was deconstructing the state, right? Because that is a principle of mine. I will empower someone to deconstruct the state. But aren't state is always going to fucking beat you because they're always going to be interested in the power of the state? Like, like, so aren't you just kind of like just subscribing to perpetual impotence because you're trying to eliminate the power source I mean, that everybody else have relies to, you on? Have to, you would have to agree that the statists will always win. And there have been examples where that is not necessarily true, right? The For Republic like six months, Spire. right? No, the yeah, Republic no, of Los Spire Spire. was what, like 300 years? 395. state. Yeah, yeah, like like 300, what? 400 years, right? They fought the papal I... state and created an anarcho-mutualist society um, that didn't that told the the papal state to go fuck themselves and yeah. engaged in tobacco sales and things like that. I mean, like, so there are examples of that occurring, right? Well, you said one. Do you have another? I mean, there's like, I mean, there have been successful and unsuccessful communities, right? Like, I, I mean, that's one. That right? just happens so we, to be so the one closest one... to our preference. Yeah, I mean, but, like, but, you, have, ask, I mean ask, you don't have sorry, any perfect representation of our ideology, no, but like there's Chiron in Mexico, there was the Oneida community, there have been plenty of anarcho-mutualist um, communes that have existed, there's obviously been communist communes that have existed, right? There are examples, through, I mean, there, there's the uh, the Iga Tsukuku Iki, mm -hmm. right? Like, which was a kind of a mixture between anarchism and feudalism in Japan, right? Like, there's there's examples okay, throughout history can of I, this can I working throw some a, uh, Can so, I throw a uh, at you real quick? We're running out of time here. We may I ask, may ask Lucas topic. a quick question, please? Very quick. Uh, and we really have a hype chain going on. If you guys could help out with that sub um, stuff, you know, that would help. Go ahead. I'm really concerned yeah. about something I thought I heard you say, Lucas. So when Destiny uh, mentioned uh, this this uh, hypothetical the hypothetical about a drowning kid, right? I, I was joking. Um, okay. Was joking. Okay. okay. Yeah, because you said no, that you I'm not. I'm not a deontologist. I'm, 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 okay. I follow, I'm a virtual, I follow virtual ethics and egoism. Okay, so, so you're not you're not totally lost, then. You just you know, no, no. I was I was joking. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. I so uh, <laughs> we're gonna move on from this. So many things. Um, yeah, and again, how about the high train uh, sub gift bits give sub this how we power this? Um, but thank you for the kind of people who've been helping us us out so far. Okay, all right. So we're moving on. <laughs>